Let's see if this works. Recording locally? Okay, so it says it's recording. All right, so let me jump back into Spark here. Do I still have it open? Yes, I do. All right, so here's my level here where uh, basically I wanted to get the mechanics down last night. Uh, first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to learn how to do fall damage. I wanted to learn how to do uh, health regeneration. Thank you, sir. I've got lots of nice wallpapers. Uh, health regeneration. I wanted to figure out how to make armies just randomly attack each other. And I also wanted to make a multi-tier magicka spell, which I do have here. Let me demonstrate that here really quick while we're waiting for the armies to come out. Here's my nice colorful character, very colorful character. Um, so I'm going to hold down the E key right now on the keyboard, and it's going to start charging my basic magicka spell. If I just tap E, it just shoots a little spark there. You can see it's just shooting a little spark. Nice blue standard spark like you see in the intro. If I hold down E, you can see that if I only hold it down for a second, it's still just going to shoot that spark. But if I hold it down for three seconds, it changes into a nice big colored spark with purple and red and green and all that good stuff. Now, if I hold it down for six seconds, boom, fireball, if you hold it down for six seconds. Now, if you hold it down for, like, the entire time where it goes into stage four, It throws a nice, fiery aura around you. And anybody that is within 10 meters of you when you release the E key will take 120 points of damage. So let's test that out. I've got an army down here, kind of battling each other down here. I've got two armies just kind of going at it. Let's see what happens when I use my fire aura on them. Boom! All dead. Just, well, one got away. One got away. Uh, so, I've got that, I've got that. Uh, another thing I want to demonstrate, of course, yeah, I've got my character, like, jumping and running really fast right now while I'm testing things. But let's show the fall damage off here. Yeah, my fall damage multiplayer could be a little higher. I should have lost more health from that. Uh, but you can see, since I damaged myself... It waited three seconds before the health started regenerating. Uh, if I were to be attacked by an enemy, and that's what took my health down, it would be five seconds before my health started regenerating. Uh, very, very useful. Very, very useful. Um, okay, uh, let's see, what else did I have in here? Um, health generation spells, uh, fall damage, armies attacking each other, so we've covered all that. Let's take a look at the brains. So let's go to my character's brain here really quick, and I'll just go through like a quick rundown of how my brain is doing what it's doing. Okay, um, first off, let's do the magic, because that's like the coolest one. That's honestly my favorite one so far. Let's go down to where I started that. Okay, so, uh, when the E button is very first pressed, uh, one time, it will set the spark multiplayer. It's a custom uh, numerical variable. It sets that to zero. Every three seconds, it loops triggered on start. And as long as it is less than four, every three seconds, it will increment by one. And just below that, we have these uh, parent uh, objects here. When spark multiplayer is equal to one, Ah, uh, yes, I am planning on having a user interface. Uh, when Spark Multiplayer is equal to 1, we're going to play the FX, Spark Neutral at socket right hand, and we're going to do that with all our different things, even the Leap Ball, which is actually a template I had to make to make that level 2 uh, Spark Ball that was like with the purple and green and everything. I actually had to make a template of that to be able to use it like this. Uh, to do that, I also had to give it a brain that told it to do damage when it hit, because apparently it loses all its brain when you make a template. Uh, so that's at socket right hand. Fireball at socket right hand if we're level 3. Level 4 is at socket center, like the center of my torso. Because that's I want my character to look like they're on fire, right? Okay, so. Um, when you get hit by an attack, last hit equals 5. 
This is the five seconds it takes before your health starts regenerating if you get hit by an enemy. And uh, once that's been processed and once that's been done, reset that to zero. As long as last hit is greater than zero, there's a countdown timer. Yeah, I'm kind of getting off topic here. We're supposed to be on the fireball still. We're supposed to be on the Magicka still. So let me go back up to the top here. Let me finish off that Magicka explanation here. So, when the E button is released, um, it checks to see what number the spark multiplier is at. At this point, it's at 1, if you just hold it down for a second or up to 3. Shoot a neutral spark. Pretty simple. If it's equal to 2, shoot a leap ball. Again, that's the template that I had to make. I'll uh, go into that brain here in a moment so you can see how easy it is to give it the brain to attack. Uh, at that point, I told it to shoot two other small neutral sparks after it, just for added effect, just for added, like, graphic effect. Uh, if it equals three, shoot a fireball. If it equals four, this is where we do our uh, fire aura that, like, destroys everyone in ten meters around you. So, if spark multiplier is equal to four, play FX fire explosion, damage 120 to objects closer than ten meters, and then set the spark, spark multiplier back to zero so it knows you've let go of the key. And it's not just going to start back off at level 2, 3, or 4. Okay, so let's get into the fall damage here. Fall damage is going to be at the very bottom. I didn't realize I could place new lines at the top before I started doing this. Okay, so. Uh, first thing we're going to... Get out of here. First thing we're going to do, we're going to initialize the fall time variable. So... Put those as shadow lines instead of on the same line. Um, yeah, because they need to be kind of processed after that first line. Um, if that first line wasn't even triggered, we don't want those other children to be processed. If the parent isn't doing anything, children shouldn't be doing anything, basically. So, uh, first thing we're going to do, one time we're going to initialize the fall time variable to zero. As soon as you start falling, I'm going to set the multiplier to 15. Uh, so it knows that you're actually falling. At that time, a countdown timer is going to start looping every one second. And every one second that you are falling through the sky, that fall time variable is going to go up by 20 points. Once the character falls and hits the ground, bump terrain, and fall time is greater than zero, damage the player oh, we got to let me scroll over there damage the player for the amount of the number that's stored in the fall time variable then set fall time to zero so that it knows you're not falling anymore and then set your last hit to three since we hit the ground and damaged ourselves the health regeneration is going to start regenerating your health after three seconds instead of the five that would have occurred if you were hit by an enemy so now let's go up to where uh, the health regeneration is. That should be... Okay, of course, this is where if you get hit by an enemy, it's going to be five seconds. Uh, last hit. If last hit is greater than zero, we're going to start a new countdown timer. And we're going to lower that last hit value you can now use that other charge combos and combat as well. Yes, yes. Uh, so now we've got a countdown timer because it knows that we've been hit. It knows that we've either fallen or we've been hit by an enemy. So every one second, we're going to lower that value by one until it hits zero. Once it hits zero, this line is going to come into effect because if your health is less than 100 and last hit is less than one, zero then we need to start healing ourselves. So, we set another countdown timer that loops every 0.02 seconds and heals the player for two health. Simple as can be, brilliant, easy, plain English. I love this code system. I love it, I love it. Uh, if you take a look at my shirt, I am a code warrior.
this level I did just put up, uh, it is shared. Uh, this level is shared. If you search for um, what is it, uh, 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 fall damage and regeneration, I, let me go ahead and type it out. Uh, you can actually, uh, I have shared that, you can download this world, remix it if you want, check out all the brains and everything. Uh, let me go ahead and jump into the brains of the army really quick, just so I can show you something about that. Basically, I used a uh, goblin spawn template. If you go into your uh, thing here and go to uh, spawner, and it's under the assemblies here. You have the Goblin Spawner. I'll just drop that in the world real quick so you can see what it looks like. It's basically a cave with a player detector. And uh, this is the actual place where the Goblin spawned from. There's no brain on this right here. That brain is empty. But this is the brain right here. This is the uh, logic cube that tells it once the player is in the trigger zone, start spawning goblins. No. That's not what we want to do. So let me go ahead and delete those things I just popped in there. And let me show you how I've modified that. Uh, this right here is the logic cube that we were just looking at after I modified it. In this case, we have a countdown timer where every 30 seconds it loops. And it sets a variable uh, for uh, team one tick, I'm calling it. We have two teams right now. Team one tick is going to equal one every 30 seconds. As soon as that equals one, uh, my number one teammate over here, which is a template as well, that's why they're glowing purple, they're going to see that when the global variable team one tick is equal to one, then we need to move toward the war zone. Uh, generally, as soon as they pop out, of the uh, cave, I have another thing here. Once, duration, random number between 2 and 7 so that they don't just seriously crowd outside the cave. I didn't want them just crowding outside the cave, so I gave them kind of a random number there for how long they should be walking. Uh, move to the player detector, which is that uh, logic cube that we were just looking at. Now the other logic cube that they go to after 30 seconds is this one over here. This is the one called uh, Warzone Cube. Nothing in its brain. It just has a name. All it is is a waypoint, basically. Uh, I did the same exact functions with the Team 2 over here. I did exactly the same thing. We have the spawner inside here. We have the actual Logic Cube here that tells it how to spawn and what to spawn. I made it spawn rangers instead of goblins. I'm so tired of seeing goblin videos. So tired of seeing those goblin videos. Uh, but let's just take a quick look and see how that works. I'm waiting up here for the armies to come out. Very shortly here you should see a character come out. And he just kind of stands out in front of the cave. And another one comes out and stands kind of close to him, not right next to him. Because they have that, and you can see over here in the uh, upper right of the screen that the other team is doing the same thing. Now once there are six of them out there, we'll take 30 seconds. They will all rush each other right down in this little valley here. I'm moving a little far away so they don't attack me instead of attacking each other because they will do that. They don't like me. Uh, I'm, this is actually the beginning of a system where uh, I'm going to make it kind of like GTA 2. We're going to have three factions and there's going to be bars at the upper left like where you see my health bar at the upper left. There's going to be three factions there and depending how many of whichever faction you kill, another faction might start liking you. Like if you start killing the red faction, the blue faction might start liking you and vice versa. The green faction is going to be completely neutral. They don't give a shit who you kill. Sorry, excuse my language. Um, but yeah, based on that faction variable that I'm going to add in there, uh, they may attack or not attack you. If they like you, they'll help you. They'll be your allies automatically. Uh, if they don't like you, of course, they're going to attack you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I've been so excited about this project that, uh, honestly, here, let me just go down and just 
kill these guys again. I love using my fire aura here. Charge up to level four. Ah, uh, you're all dead. Oh, except for one. Uh, not at the moment. Okay, so um, that's pretty much my introduction video. That's pretty much my introduction video. This isn't really my uh, video where I'm going to be training people how to do these things, but I gave a basic overview. I'm going to be releasing more videos where I go into greater detail f for each one of those specific things, like fall damage, I want to do a specific video. I want to do a specific video for health regeneration. I want to do a specific video for setting up the army, a specific video for doing the multi-tier magic like that. Uh, I'm stopping the stream here, but uh, yes, please feel free to go ahead and download this level. I'm going to stop the stream right now. I've got to find out how much hard drive space that video took up here.